Howdy Pilgrim! Your social networking website is going to require a stable and efficient system for storing lots of information and accessing all of that stored data when it needs to. The technologies we will use are MySQL for the database system and PHP to interact with the database. The largest, most used social network running online right now has a PHP and MySQL core. You will also have those technologies at work in your system. Does that make you happy? Hmm? Now if you have a large development team like Facebook or Google Plus has grown to have, that is when you would most likely need to invent your own frameworks for your software. Otherwise, if you're one lone coder like me, you can simply modulate the functions that make sense to make modular, reusable, and dynamic. Object-oriented programming is no more complex than making your functions modular and reusable only when it makes sense to. And I will point out when it is best and makes good sense to make a function external and modular so you can get a good sense of when to logically apply object-oriented programming to your system. Some people over-oop. I call it over-ooping. And I'll make sure that you guys don't over-oop anything. We'll only oop the things that need ooping. Okay, oopy. Now log into the hosting provider for your website and go to your control panel. We're going to create the database now. Scroll down to you see MySQL databases and you might happen to be hosted at GoDaddy or some other hosting provider that doesn't have this style of control panel. But you can just always contact GoDaddy and have them lead you through the steps of how to create a MySQL database. It's no big deal. It's very easy. I think four-year-old kids can do it. Okay, so we click MySQL databases and keep in mind that nobody would normally ever see what you're typing in here or what the credentials are for your database and all the naming conventions and things like that. So you might see some things while I'm doing the tutorial within my system that might cause a security consideration for my site, but you wouldn't have to worry about those things because nobody's going to actually see the credentials for your stuff. And I'm not going to show you guys my passwords or anything like that, but you might see what my database is named and things like that. And that's, that's no big deal. Now this is an existing database that I have. If you have a brand new hosting account, you would have no databases listed in here, and you would probably have no user, MySQL users either. So you would have to create that. So first you just create your new database. I'm just going to call mine social and then click create database. And it then says added the database. Let's go back. And you can see now I have that world underscore social with no user attached to it though. So I'm going to, if you don't have a user for your database, you have to create that now. So you put your username there and you make your password here. Then you verify your password, blah, blah, blah and then you create user and then you'll be able to do this I'm gonna add user to database right now you ready I'm gonna take that user that I created and I'm going to add it to my social database add and it's gonna ask you for what privileges you want to give that user for production purposes I'm gonna give that user all privileges but when you go to actually run your site and you're gathering members you might want to come back and remove some of the privileges that this user has to alter the database. But for production, in the beginning here, I'm just going to click All, Make Changes. Then it says User Adam was added to the database Social. Okay, so you can see now, this is the database for my website, adamcorey.com. So just disregard that that one's even there. You would just have your new database listed, just one of them, and you would have your user for the database attached to that database by adding the user to the database down here. So you have successfully now created a MySQL database. And now I'm going to show you how to make a connection script. That way on your website you can communicate with that database through PHP. And it'll be a PHP based connection script. Go into your code editor, go to file, new, PHP file, get rid of all of that data that's pre-filled. Press Control S. And within your folder system, in your root folder, let's make one new folder. And we're going to call that PHP underscore includes. And those will store all the files that are going to be included into other files because our connection script, let's name that db underscore connects. Save. Because 
this file is going to be included into other scripts that need to connect to the database. That way you don't have to keep uh, writing your connection code into each file that might need to connect to the database. So it's like a modular way to have your connection script set up. Okay, let's create a PHP scripting block. And let's make our connection variable named db underscore connects. And that's going to be equal to the MySQL I connect function. And we're using MySQL I extension instead of the regular old MySQL just to give us some improved performance because the MySQL I extension is an improved extension over MySQL. It's like the next gen. MySQL I connect is a PHP function that is used specifically for connecting to your MySQL database. And it gets six parameters. It can have possibly six parameters, but we're only going to use the first four parameters because the last two parameters are optional for uh, socket connections. So all we're going to need is the first four parameters, and I'll explain those to you now. The first parameter is going to be the database host. And for most of you guys, and for myself, it's going to be local host. Now sometimes the database host will be a different string that you have to put in there depending on where you're hosting your website. But for most hosting companies, it's local host. If you have any trouble connecting to your database, you can get in touch with your hosting company to find out the exact credentials that you need to put in for local host. Then you put comma and then the next parameter, which is the database user. And you remember what mine was, that world of Adam. Then you put comma and the next parameter is the user password for that database user. So I'll just put some X's in there because that's where I'm going to put my password and I don't want you guys to see my exact password because then I'll be doomed. And then comma and the last parameter which is the database name and here's the name of my database. So you have your database host string goes right there, database user, database user password and then the database name itself. Now let's evaluate our connection because when we run it we're going to want to see some error output if we, our credentials happen to be incorrect and the connection to the database does not occur. We want to know and understand why. So we'll place this next few lines of code to perform that. We're saying if there's a MySQLI connect error message then we're going to echo out the exact MySQL connection error and then we exit the script. And here is where you would handle whatever you want to happen if a MySQL connection error occurs. But while you're in production, I would recommend that you run uh, some kind of uh, output string to tell you exactly what the error is. That way you can fix it. But after production, while you're running the site live, you might want to change that to do some kind of other functionality if a MySQL connection error occurs. For instance, you can just echo out a string to say our database server is down at the moment. That way the user doesn't see exactly what kind of error connections or any details about what's going wrong. They just see whatever message you want to output to them. Or you can header them to a new location. Some script that says, oh, you broke the site. Come back later. All right, just so everybody understands, MySQLI connect erno returns the error code from the last connect call. And MySQLI connect error returns a string description of your last connection error if there happens to be one. And this returns the code from the last connect call. And you can easily evaluate this with an if condition. And we can see that since my password is not in place, I will get a uh, connection error. So Let's take this script just as it is right now and we can place it anywhere on our live server online and run it to see if we get a database connection. So actually let's uh, just while we're testing the page let's put an else condition here and let's echo out a string to ourselves that says successful database connection. Happy coding. Alright so we're going to take this script and we're going to put it online right now and you're going to see that mine is going to cause a MySQL connection error and it's going to tell me exactly what the description of that error is. And mine is going to be related to the password being incorrect because my password is not correct here. So if your local host string is wrong or your user is wrong or your password for the user is wrong or the database name 
is wrong, this PHP function is going to echo that error to you, tell you exactly what's wrong. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to FTP it up to my live website, webintersect.com, and I'm going to run it by navigating directly to dbconnects.php. So I'm going to navigate directly to dbconnects.php, and it says access denied for the user Adam at localhost using password yes. That means my password is incorrect, and we can clearly see that because mine are all X's. Now I'm going to put my proper password in, my actual password, and I'm going to run that script again to see what kind of output I get. I'm going to reload this file to the web, re-FTP it, and then run it again from my server. And remember now, we're just testing things right now. Okay, now I have the new file up, and I'm going to press refresh in a moment. But I want you guys to know that if you get some kind of error message like this, there's usually on most uh, hosting accounts or on your host server, you'll have an error log file in the directory where the error was created. So look within your FTP program to see if there's an error log file that ever shows up and that'll show you all of your errors that occur within your PHP scripting. And if an error log file doesn't show up within your file system on your server, you can adjust the master PHP any file that is for the PHP directives on your server. And there's also functions in PHP that will show you error reporting. You can put them directly in your scripts. So for instance, in the first couple of lines here, you can put a couple of functions in PHP, which I've gone over in other tutorials, that will show you error output. So now let me refresh this page. There you go. Successful database connection. Happy coding. Now at this point, I can go ahead and create all of the tables. I can just create a temporary script that's going to communicate, it's going to connect and communicate with the database to create all the necessary tables that I'm going to need to store all the information for my members. And that's what we're going to take care of in the next tutorial. We'll be creating a script that's going to magically create all of our tables within our database. Or you can use uh, PHP MyAdmin. There's two different ways to get tables. Uh, created into your database. You can use PHP MyAdmin, which is so for beginners to have a more hands-on approach to table creation and manipulating data within the database. Or you can use direct scripts in PHP, which I'll show you how to use direct scripting. Okay, so stay tuned for video number three.